Old tenure, so we <laughs> bring in the mogul. First, Delegate Michael Hornby. Good morning, mogul. Good morning, Rob. How are you? I'm so much better now that I'm in your presence. <laughs> Thank you so much. Quite welcome. <laughs> also, Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matt Harvey. Good morning, Matt. Good morning. Great to be back. Uh, what you been up to lately? Anything? <laughs> And New York Times bestselling author John Gilstrap, who signs a new book deal about as often as I buy shirts. Good morning. How are you, sir? I am well. Thank you. I'll be about twice a year. Uh, is that right? <laughs> but what it is when you sign these book deals? Yeah, probably. Yeah, all right. That's cool. Uh, we should just call them bags of cash. Well, if you notice yeah. he's sitting up higher today, it's yeah. because of the size of the okay. wallet. The wallet gotcha. has increased in width tremendously over the last and couple it, of days. And it ain't because the chair doesn't keep collapsing. <laughs> and, and his shirt's the color of money. That's it right. is. Yeah, As right. is Mr. Hornby. He couldn't, he couldn't hide it. Even subconsciously, he's like, I just want to look like money. I just feel rich today, is what he's saying. Actually, I heard back from my editor yesterday, and there's no editorial letter. Is there, the, the book is going through. They didn't change the As thing? Is. Well, there's going to be spelling. I, st- I don't understand commas, so you know, th- there'll be that kind of stuff. There's like that, comma but, Nazis but, out there, right? There, there are, are people who are zealots about commas. Yes, and I just don't. I put them in, and they take them out. I don't put them in, and they put them in. So the Comma, the colon, and the semicolon. Uh, there's no room for a semicolon in fiction. <laughs> just that's my rule. I don't understand them. They don't do anything. So therefore, I I have never used a semicolon. It is the most probably misunderstood of all the punctuation marks, right? The, I, I the colon you know because there's a list of things. Easy colon. Well, and then the semicolon. Once you start the list, then yeah. you can separate them by semicolon. That's fine. Um, but it, I don't know what a semicolon does that a period does not just let that go i heard i heard the words as they came out (laughs) you know well we will let that go right after middle east tensions the tension between the semicolon and the comma and the period you should kill michael height with a fictional a fictional mike height with a semicolon it falls from the sky like a meteor He's already died Comet. gruesomely one time. I'm not sure that... Well, Harvey's got some anger in him this morning. Well, yeah. <laughs> Subject of some public anger right now. <laughs> Has Matt been up to something? So, uh, Matt, I, I know to... you're limited as to what you can and can't discuss, yes. but you did uh, make a petition for the removal of the two commissioners in Jefferson County. Yes, I did. What can you tell us in regards to that petition? I would... In, if anybody's curious about it, it is voluminous. It's 39 pages. There's a... Uh, I would... You know, if people want to learn about what... It's public knowledge, correct? It's, that is yeah. public knowledge. Can, can you cite some of the main items well, in the Well, look, the I'll, I'll just say, and, and, and I think this is important to say, um, you know, th- these are just grounds that I have cited in a petition. Uh, they will be, rev- you know, they will be, it'll be up to a judge to review all of this information. They, I think that they need to have a presumption of innocence in this, the two respondents to this petition. And, you know, everybody should have an open mind. They'll have an opportunity to come to court and defend themselves and you get the same consideration that you would give a, a, crim, a criminal defendant pending an indictment is mm-hmm. you should absolutely give them benefit of the doubt and and then I'll, I'll, it's my responsibility to prove it beyond clear and convincing evidence so and I've, and I've laid it out in that petition what I believe the evidence will show and the grounds for why I filed the petition can you cite some of the major parts of that petition in regards to the grounds well, th- what's cited in, and there's a there's a preamble that kind of lists the four buckets, which I, I think are 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 the most germane in this situation, which was the do- the failure to attend meetings, failure to to do certain other duties, uh, failure to attend to the county business, and the receiving of of financial remuneration for not performing work. Okay. So that's that's what's alleged in the petition, mm-hmm. and it'll be my responsibility to prove it. Not theirs. What happens with the with this petition now that it's been filed? It will have a preliminary hearing on the 29th of November. So that's yes. Yeah, what, what judge? Well, I, I believe it's Judge Hammer. As of now, but that could change. I, you know that those things are aren't necessarily in my control. Mm-hmm. And what does he do at this hearing? What's his role? You know, there's not a lot. It, he is to evaluate the petition for any sort of technical defects. That's one thing. Um, and also evaluate whether the grounds, if <clears throat> as asserted are true, would cl- be provable by clear and convincing evidence that they, those are grounds for removal. Mm-hmm. And then what happens after he... And if it's reaches. successful at that, at that proceed, uh, if it continues on, then he sends it down to the Supreme Court who p- appoints a three-judge panel. Where do those judges come from? 
it says no more than one from the the area. So there could be one from here, or there could. You be, mean from from, from this Eastern circuit? Panhandle? Yes. Okay. We're so still we're still we're still in our yeah, circuit. Yes. That's the three county circuit, which will will change after the election next year, and in officially January first, uh, two thousand twenty five. But um, that, and then and then I don't know. There's no rhyme or reason from where the other the other two or three mm-hmm. will come. And then those three review the case and they make a binding decision. It's not binding, but th- there'll be another he- opportunity for a hearing. You know, they have rights. They these are due process rights. They th- I'm trying to take something from them, which is a position. And so, the, the, you know, the under that that view, that vein, they'll look at this and um, whether I then I have to prove my case, right? Mm-hmm. So and then. And then if, if the judges, I'll put on evidence, they'll have an opportunity to put on evidence uh, and obviously cross-examine any witnesses and challenge any evidence that I put on. And if they judges rule that it, they are grounds for removal, that it's proven by clear and convincing evidence and that, that they are a proper, properly grounds for removal, then they'll enter an order saying so. And then they'll have an opportunity to appeal that to the Supreme Court. So very, very similar to any other type of case in West Virginia. So this could go all the way to the Supreme Court. It could, yeah. It could. And, it, a, and it could be months, correct? Like time, time wise. It, the only thing that I know is once this here, we have this hearing on the 29th, and if the judge thinks that everything's appropriate, uh, and he then like the Supreme Court has 20 days or. To, to appoint a three-judge panel. But I don't, I'm not sure about the timeline. I'm, I've, this is my first time yeah. participating in a removal hearing. They they do occur. I know there's a there's one going on in another part of the state um, currently, but they happen sporadically. And if this is appealed, and I would presume it would be, would it be a case that could go to the intermediate appellate level first, or would it go straight to the Supreme Court? Straight first? to the Supremes. It doesn't go to the the new intermediate court of appeals. Why does it skip that? Because it's not in the statute to to go there. Okay, that's fair enough. Uh, you mentioned a time frame, Mike. This I would hope. I would hope that it would skip the intermediate court of appeals and go sh- straight to the final arbiter of of the case. You would hope, so you don't know 100% for sure? It no, I do, I, it's not in the statute. It goes to the Supreme Court. Okay. Yeah. Go but, ahead, John. At the far end of this, as all this is going on, real people are are being harmed. They're paying out money and, and because the business is, is not being conducted. Is there an opportunity for them to be made whole through all of this? Through this pro, for the, through the re, the well, removal when, process, the six six seven. When the drama w- is is done and whatever happens happens, there are still people who are stuck, being harmed in the process. How do they get made whole again? I think this was. I, I'm not going to address that at this time. Okay. Because I, 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 I don't know, and I'm uncertain. I think, and I think Joe Freddie addressed it yesterday. Okay. Are there other lawsuits, Matt? that are coming from this like private companies are, are they are they there was any, one there was one filed yes okay yes was there um i know it's probably hard to to talk about it but you brought this this um uh what would you call it petition this? petition was it based on a timeline was it just it, it was how many meetings they missed or how what made you bring the petition at at that point is it just out of fairness to the respondents that's gotcha that's a topic i would like i don't want to discuss you know that may come up in court right and you know that's the appropriate forum for for a lot of these discussions Can, can you answer this question did matt address or respond from jeff haddix to jackson slash krause's letter to him to get an opinion on the issue they brought to him I would just recommend anybody to have questions like that. Again, out of fairness to the respondents, I'm not going to try to move the narrative one way right. or another. I would refer them right back to the petition, mm-hmm. and I would encourage Mr. Haddix to read the petition. And uh, yesterday there was a similar question about uh, Commission President Steve Stolifer, or whether or not you're acting on request of Mr. Stolifer to file this petition. Mr. Stolifer said uh, in a text to me directly he did not request that you file this petition. Okay. I, I, I have the authority to fi- There's four ways, right, mm-hmm. jo- Joe Freddy, that the c- commission can meet and vote or, this, or city council, um, the petition, 
the prosecuting attorney. And there's one that he didn't mention, which is kind of deep down in the statute that I found. I'm just going to bring it up because I thought it was interesting. But the auditor's office also has the ability to remove elected officials under financial circumstances like embezzlement, misappropriation, misapplication of of public monies. Mm -hmm. I thought that was interesting. Uh, People during a legitimate election elect officials to an office. They do. Obviously, it's it's not to be taken lightly removing those uh, uh, candidates or, or in this particular case, elected officials yeah. from office. Absolutely. So uh, I'm presuming this was not a decision you made or took lightly. That's fair. From the point of consideration of filing this, posi- this petition to actually filing it, can you tell me how much time went by? No. I'm, again, it's... I mean, that's it's, cool. That's fine. That's yes. fair. You answer what you think you I can, can answer I, what I, you can't. Again, just out of fairness to the respondents who have rights, mm-hmm. um, it's it's my job to prove what I said I can prove in the court and and not in pub, you know, on a radio station, but in a, a forum of where everybody's sworn in and we have mm-hmm. rules in place. Have you ever filed a petition like this previously? I have not. No. No. I, I can't answer that <laughs> very clearly. That is... it. They happen, again, but... But they're not – I'm trying to think of um, the last time one's happened in Je- – I'm not aware of any that's happened in Jefferson County. So I, I know that they have, but um, – What about in the state of West Virginia? It does, well, I know. Happen it does. It does. It, yeah, a lot of times what will happen is one will – there'll be some groundswell, some petitioners, and, and then the writing's on the wall, and then the – person will resign so or they'll get filed and the person will resign and then they'll they'll moot out and so what that means is when i'm looking doing research and i'm looking at the case law there's not you know thousands of cases that have been heard by the supreme court because out of every case that gets heard only so many actually make it through so if if they decided to show up tonight to the meeting and get back to work and they show up for the next few meetings or whatever it is and they actually do what they're elected to do does this all go away i'm is that, or, <laughs> that's I, not, does, that's, that's but, not something that i think is appropriate to discuss okay this is going i presume that this is going to trigger because it's a legal action they will be uh required or be wise to get their own legal counsel to represent their interests because they're public servants who may or may not be serving um, is that does the public pay for their legal defense or does that come out of their own pockets if they decide to do that so the question the the, the stat I'll tell you what the statute says it says that if uh, there's the respondents are successful that the 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 agency that they work for or the office that they work for shall reimburse their attorney's fees okay that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I think so. All right. If, if there are no more questions in regards to this situation, I want to ask a couple other questions about another situation, if that's possible. You guys uh, good? good. I Ready to move, move on? on? Yeah. And that is in regards to uh, your recent appointment or election, yes. I suppose, yes. as the yes. head of the West Virginia First Foundation Committee. Congratulations. Chair- yes. You've been elected as the chairman of that committee. Okay. I have been, yes. Uh, what are your duties and responsibilities of ch- as chairman of that committee? Um, right now, well, we're the main responsibility is to keep the progress on track. It is a brand new foundation. We had our first call of the incorporator on November the sixth, and at that and at that uh, meeting, we selected leadership, and we also uh, opened a bank account. Just little administrative tasks, and so my role and responsibility for the next little bit is to make sure that the other administrative tasks tasks like procuring legal counsel procuring investment advisors cpas professional staff that we get the rfps out for items like that so we can build our foundation and the structure and then develop investment policies uh, funding priorities we can start to build out on the what i think is extremely important which is the expert panel for the foundation because they will be you know, we have we have to have subject matters that are geographically diverse, and we that we want to hear from every uh, part of the state from experts on what should be a priority in in their region for funding. 
How many people are on the committee that you will be chairman of? There's 11 of us. There's six elected that are by regions that are defined by the DHHR. And then there's five governor appointees. And the committee you're in charge of, is that in charge of the entire state or the region? The entire state. The entire state. It's a lot of responsibility, obviously. It is. It is. It's. It's. But there's a lot of incredible people that are on that board. And, and again, my... I'm like a conductor at this at this point. I'm, I have really talented people. We have really talented attorneys and and bankers that are helping us to get started. Mm-hmm. And so my my role is to make sure that they have what they need to be successful. How much money will you be in charge of for this foundation? Initially, the first drawdown was uh, three hundred million dollars. Now, what that means is uh, by the formula, uh, seventy three and a half million will be. Uh, distributed immediately by immediately i mean probably by the end of the year by the end of this year i think so yeah that's what i was told that's what we were told um but if not distributed to you not no 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 73 and a half million will go to your counties and municipalities okay by the funding formula so they'll have that money in hand really soon to start and they have a schedule of of approved expenditures you know they that they should be looking at to spend this money on. So they're planning that now. They they should what, be. What those they should be. That's should not be. you know that, right. that's, that's nothing to do with your. That's panel. nothing to do with us. Um, except you know we I, I've been offering a support role, encouraging them to look at the guidelines, make sure that they don't misappropriate any money, so it won't be clawed back by the defendants of the lawsuit. And then that means that we um, our drawdown was two hundred seventeen million dollars. Mm-hmm. So that's what we were opening our bank account with as, as the first foundation initially. $73 million goes to the counties and municipalities. Mm-hmm. That's spread out over the 55 counties Correct. and numerous municipalities. Correct. There's a funding formula in the memorandum of understanding. And a lot of these questions, uh, and they're really good questions, but a lot of this information, if you Google West Virginia First Foundation MOU, you can get a lot of, you know, a lot of what I'm saying in there. Mm-hmm. It's, our, it's our blueprint for how we're operating at this point. And then your experts, are they the ones who are advising you what to do with the $213 million part moving forward? Correct? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Because, our, you know, look at it like this. We're bored. We're, we're, we have like a fiduciary duty to make sure that these mons, m- monies don't get misappropriated and they're, they're invested wisely. Uh, the, the expert panel is, our again, our subject matter experts who will tell us, you know, they're doctors, they're, they're program managers, they're – recovery coaches who are the boots on the ground yeah. that are out in the different regions and we're we're having a lot of robust discussion um and trying to put together what we think is our best idea of of how do we achieve this through this expert panel because we we recognize the value of it all and it's unquestioned because we, we we're so careful about making sure that we don't yeah. overlook any any part of the state so municipalities or counties could be getting more money in the future. You never know. They, well, they on will. What the experts? Well, well, that that's a good point. So they will be getting money automatically because there's still another. There's still more money coming yeah. in. So next year they there might be a drawdown of a hundred million or five hundred million or not five hundred million. Excuse me, fifty million, and um, and that's subject to the the division that's in the MOU. And so these counties and municipalities will will be getting money going into the future because the way the settlements were the structured, yeah. that some some defendants don't have to pay, they have a 15 year payoff schedule. Some are two, three, four, five. I'm not familiar with that, but we're looking at probably another 40 million. And we there's still 100 million dollars that that's in a in the escrow now that needs to be drawn down from from the settlement. John. Are there metrics established, or maybe that's what you're doing within the committee? There's going to be a long two hundred thirteen million dollars is a lot of money, so you're going to have a lot of of organizations and um, yeah and people come that, that want their share. Are you developing the specific metrics and mechanisms by which the the funding is assigned? And yes. Is that is that a yes. matter of public record that people can go and look at it and say that these are the check boxes oh, yeah. that I have to live through? It it will be because it doesn't it doesn't make any sense to have have a checklist of, of the metrics that are just secret. You know, it needs to be known to these programs, like here's what we're looking for, here's what you need to do to be successful. And you know, just generally, you would want something that's evidence-based, you would want a, an organization that has the financial uh, uh, controls in place to make sure that the money is is implemented correctly and not misspent. 
Matt, is it uh, the goal to spend all the money or is it the goal to have a sustainable amount of money like you're, you're, you're doing investments into you know, the stock market or whatever, the goal to have spend on the interest or is it the goal to spend all that money well, in the community? There, because it, the, the mandate is if, that the counties and, this, and the municipalities, and this took a tremendous amount of trust and, and on their part, is they, instead of getting all this money immediately they wanted to preserve it in perpetuity perfect and that's why that that's why this structure exists as a charitable foundation is to protect that amount of money now what that means is that doesn't mean we're going to set on it for number one fin- irs laws don't allow tr- financial or private foundations that to set on money they have to spend right. it out okay and so there will be a, a there's at least a floor of what we of of what we can sp- of what we need to spend and then there there is interest it's two million dollars yeah. a month yeah that's that's coming in um so that it has a a really a big amount of money has a lot of leverage so but that doesn't mean you you should just sit on it if you have a really terrific program that can make a difference and you need to spend money spend the money yeah spend the money you can all, but again with this because you have such a big uh, amount of money you can leverage other sources of money you can private you can partner with uh, government the, the legislature could put money into a program with, with a, a match with the matching funds from federal yeah. or, or state I mean, there's a yeah. lot of because because it is a private foundation there's a a lot of the chains are off that yeah. would restrict a state agency so it's exciting it's exciting matt delegate hornby has in front of him a report that was uh, provided to him by the legislative auditor. And we're going to be talking to that person later on this morning here in regards to the use of COVID funds, ARPA funds, ESSER funds. CARES all, funds, ESSER funds. All sorts yeah. of different funds that came flowing in during the pandemic. It amounted to over a billion dollars. And in that report is uh, examples of misuse of those funds uh, and uh, purchases that were made from non-approved vendors which doesn't necessarily mean that they were corrupt, uh, but they right. were not approved vendors from the Secretary of State's list. Who's auditing the use of these funds to make sure these funds are spent appropriately by the counties, municipalities, and the foundation? Well, well, now, it's, it's two different things. The, the, the way the counties and the municipalities spend their money isn't, un, isn't something that's, that the foundation has oversight over. That, that's, your, that's your auditor's office. That's your local authorities. Um, so... Um, that's the answer to that, and I think the the requirements f- for spending this these dollars will be a lot different. Uh, and what's important about the COVID that was a stimulus package, whereas this is money that's been recovered b- because a defendant has harmed you. So you're not going to have right? yeah, so yeah. you're not going to have that ticking time that you got to get this money out. You got to spend this money. You got to spend this money. So I, 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 I can see, that, you know, this is very troubling to hear about the, the COVID money, but I, I don't think we're going to have the same set of pro- issues with this. And, um, and I know for a fact that the counties and the municipalities are working together to get out some guidelines, some guardrails to make sure that, 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 that very same issue doesn't happen uh, going forward. Now, as far as the foundation, the, uh, the MOU calls for that the attorney general has, has audit power over over the foundation but we i can tell you what we're actively talking about like we we want to be as transparent as possible you know this is i mean i know it's a private foundation but the source of the 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 funds is from we public harm yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. so so it's it's you got to try to make it um you got to it's a private foundation you can't restrict it you got to allow it to have the flexibility uh to really take advantage of the of the organization but look hey I don't want I don't want to have to come back to Jefferson County and say where's all the money where's all the money you're hiding it no 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 we, we I want to be able we we all do on the board be able to uh, and show where the money is where it's being spent and the impact that it's having in the communities and so and the programs that you can spend it on are pretty open right I mean there's there, as long as it's well we have a, helping with the right uh, uh, prevention prevention, prevention, prevention and enforcement yeah. treatment yeah. yeah. Those are your big. I would say your yeah. three big buckets okay. that that pretty much cover everything. If you think of it like that, so I, you know I've had some uh, some exciting discussions about some 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 software and stuff that can track 
the impact and some developing metrics and all that's on the table and you know i can just tell you from a board our discussions are certainly we want to be transparent we want to be open about what money we have and and the good that it's doing because uh you know we we were entrusted with this tremendous responsibility matt you held up to a good 25 minutes of uh, cross-examination filibuster <laughs> with oh. your filibuster yes yeah. uh, that uh, anyway yeah, do you have a final question john i just the guardrails that are established in west virginia are they mandated as, as part of the 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 settlement money that's coming in, or are the guardrails established here likely to be different than the ones in Virginia and South Dakota and elsewhere in in the country? Well, I, they're so general, right? But the, the the guardrails are the where you can spend the money and what you can spend money on. I think is pretty much going to be universal across state. But now how they how they take that money and spend it is different. So there, there's going to be guard, there's different guardrails for each state. Okay. Thank you, Matt, and you'll be staying with us as a co-host as well today. Not just a guest, but a co-host. A guesting co-host. Well, I wasn't supposed to be a guest today. I was supposed to be a co-host, and I got... Uh, you, it's been a big couple of weeks. <laughs> it's been a big couple of weeks. Thank you, John. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say that's true. That's an understatement. <laughs>